jumping chimney Christmas. It's an homage to me. Let the good times roll. <laughs> These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm V Infuso. And if you're an avid watcher of this channel, then you know that I'm an avid watcher of all things Batman related. As a matter of fact, I have a section on my shelf right behind me to prove it. And I think my lifelong, for lack of a better term, obsession started with Batman the Animated Series. Not that I'm special in any type, way, shape, or form, because... I imagine so did a lot of yours. That show gave me some of my all-time favorite characters in fiction. Like, it holds up. And it's still to this day. It's filled with some of my favorite stories in any and all Batman lore. Shadow of the Bat, Harley and Ivy, Heart of Ice, Beware the Grey Ghost, Two-Face, Almost Got Him. Come on, they're classics. And that series is a big part of the reason why I'm now a 28-year-old man who talks about Batman on the internet. But it's like the late, great John Lennon once said, you may say I'm a man-child, but I'm not the only one. I take that as a compliment, good sir. If you're like, who's this dweeb? I get it. Adding to the list of pushing 30s individuals who talk about Batman on the internet for a living, I'm James, and I run the Watchtower Database YouTube channel with my creative cohorts Ted and Maddie. We do weekly videos on all things Bruce Tim DC Animated Universe, with occasional ventures into other decently relevant DC or animation topics. Batman, Superman, Justice League Unlimited, Batman Beyond, Static Shock, the other one. So if that sounds interesting to you at all, go check us out. I'm sure V's linked us below like a good little boy. Having a whole channel about the DCAU, Batman the Animated Series obviously means a lot to me. But I didn't actually start watching it until it was off the air and into its sequel series, The New Batman Adventures, which is the subject of this video you're watching here right done now like. I had a couple of those old character specific VHS tapes, the Robin and Poison Ivy ones, and I watched those over and over and over again, as well as the ever badass Batman Mask of the Phantasm movie. When the new redesigned show came out, my third grader brain didn't really care about all the changes to the look of the world. It just knew, yay, more Batman! I'm a baby! I'm gonna print out the entire Warner Brothers Batman and Superman website and put it in a giant unwieldy binder and waste all my parents' money on printer ink! So now here I am, 20-something years later, and that's basically still my life. Plus a wife, a house, a kid on the way. Hey, man-child has its perks. Okay, now you know me. Back to V. Great! So now that all us Batman children have been acquainted, Let's get down to the real reason we're all here. The Batman. The classic show had a significant rebrand in its final season. If you want to count this as their final season. I mean, technically, it's actually two seasons of a sequel series. It was a new show, but it was released on DVD as volume four of the old show, but it had a new name, but it didn't have a new intro, except for when it aired alongside Superman, in which case it did have a new intro with Superman. You know what? Let, let, let's just move past it. It's confusing, and my brain is only so big, and by big, I mean small. The show went from being known as Batman the Animated Series to the new Batman Adventures. And I feel like this is the part of the series where the show realized it was a cartoon. There's a very clear animation shift, in an effort to try to fit in better with its spin-off, Superman the Animated Series. Before, the show was drawn with characters resembling real people, but now they're much more toned down and significantly less detailed. Characters like Harley Quinn and Two-Face pretty much stayed the same outside of losing some of their features. Poison Ivy's not too far off from her original counterpart, although, actually, now that I think about it, the more I look at her, she kinda is. It's like abstract art from afar, same thing. Close up, complete, completely different ballgame. But more on that later from James. Yeah, we've had a Poison Ivy video brewing for like over a year now, but it requires me and my boys to get together to film in person. Thanks, Corona! Then there's others who were redesigned from the ground up. The Mad Hatter was suddenly drawn to more closely resemble the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. But personally, I think he just kind of looks like a leprechaun. I mean, just look at him. That's not the Mad Hatter. That's... It's animated Hornswoggle. Yeah, he somehow shrunk in height significantly, but same voice actor, same person, I don't know what happened here. I guess it's the same way Joker hollowed his eyes out or Penguin grew fingers back onto his head. Wait, shit, I'm jumping ahead. Killer Croc went from looking like a crocodile man, which he was, to becoming a more snake-like creature. I always hated this change in appearance. Not only was the original design much, much better, but even without the obligatory comparison, this new design just sucks. There was no canonical reason for it either. This version of Croc was never a metahuman, a splicer per se. He was just a bumpy dude. He was a wrestler, a performer. I don't know how his skin turned green and I never will. 
Baby Doll looks disgustingly oversimplified. Before it seemed like she had some kind of depth and she could emote, here she just looks like a creepy Tim Burton creation. Which is ironic, because this is not the Batman that Tim Burton made. Just speaking on my own behalf, I never really liked Bane's look in the original animated series. The nose hole always just really threw me off. You want to know how the new Adventures of Batman fix that? By making him a gimp! Because I know when I think of Batman, the first thing I think about is S&M, because that- Oh. That, 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 that's, a good, that's a good point. I'll shut up now. Bane also never actually fought Batman in this series. He fought Superman dressed as Batman, and then he fought Batman in a dream sequence. We finally actually saw them together in the Batman Mystery the Batwoman movie several years after the show had been off the air. Anorexic Jim Gordon really hurts to look at. The new design makes him seem like such a feeble and frail old man. Whereas originally he was a much more dignified older dude. Which is also probably why I fancast Tom Selleck in the role. Tom, while we still have time, please call up your agent, do it. The Riddler became this, and I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how to properly describe to you what I'm looking at, other than to say Edward Nigma apparently had an emo phase back in 1996. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be based off of Jim Carrey's bodysuit from Batman Forever, or the Frank Gorshin form-fitting look from the Adam West show, but either way, yeah, it, it sucks. And he also didn't really do anything. He never even got his own episode of the new Batman Adventures. Hell, the training robot built to look like him in Batman Beyond did more. But personally, I think the worst offender of them all was Bruce Wayne himself. Look at him looking at the viewer with his soulless dead eyes. That's not the Batman I know. That's not the Batman I love. Hashtag not my Batman. Which did get better in Justice League, at least for the series finale Starcrossed, where they did kind of give him his hair floopies back from BTAS. That's the best animated Bruce Wayne has looked and you can't convince me otherwise. That's, that's the fucking look. That's not to say that the show didn't offer up some new, interesting redesigns. While I didn't like what was done to Bruce, the same can't be said for his caped counterpart. I actually think this works a lot better than his original design, because at least now it doesn't look like he has a target painted on his chest. I imagine it's a lot easier to blend in with the shadows when you're not wearing a yellow bullseye over your heart. Batgirl also got an upgrade, which I think is definitely superior to her previous design. And it's a look that they carried over to the comics. Hashtag, this is my Batgirl. Mr. Freeze also looks a lot more intimidating and threatening. I think his new look really adds to his icy demeanor. Chill. 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 And need I remind you of the horror that was the Scarecrow? Look at that. That is fucking horrifying. He looks like the corpse of Jeepers Creepers. He looks like my sleep paralysis nightmares come to life. And look, I'm just gonna say it, I know absolutely no one is gonna agree with me on this point, but I actually like the Joker's redesign. Wrong. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? I mean, granted, his hair probably should have been a touch greener and his lips should have been, well, actually red. But I like the outfit. And I was even a fan of the Animaniac Steamboat Willie eyes. They say that the eyes are the gateway to a man's soul. Well, you look into those eyes and you tell me what you see. Blank, pale, emotionless face. The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Now I personally think the Joker design from Return of the Joker is the best. The one that carried over into Static Shock and Justice League. But I'll concede that this version of the Joker was the scariest and best exactly one time. This one shot from World's Finest. Holy mother of God, I am not going to sleep tonight. The Penguin suddenly has the correct amount of fingers. And now he's less Penguin Man? and more man-penguin. Penguin was even originally supposed to look like this, more or less, in early production art from Bruce Timm. But of course, studio's gonna interfere, and it was essentially mandated they stick to the Danny DeVito look from Batman Returns. Once the Tim Burton phase had blown over and BTAS had effectively separated itself as its own entity, they got to do more of whatever they wanted. Hence the now much more approachable business-like penguin. And I like that the only way to explain these major changes in characters' appearances is that the series takes place after a time jump. Like pressing fast forward and hopping in the DeLorean would suddenly give Penguin four extra fingers and shrink Mad Hatter three full feet. And that's definitely the case. Over two years pass between the shows. Even more time if you count the new Batman The Adventures Continue comic, which we've covered every issue of in great detail over on the Watchtower database. So I guess these boys had the open calendar space to allow for some plastic surgery. Who do they go to for that? Is there an evil Leslie Tompkins floating around for supervillains? 
Is it just Leslie Tompkins with a goatee? The thing is, if they were truly redesigned to fit in with Superman the Animated Series, I guess I could understand that, but they almost made these characters too cartoony. Because when Lex Luthor and Joker share a scene together, they don't look like they're from two different cities, they look like they're from two different universes. Outside of redesigns of old characters, the new season also brought us a couple new ones. In the second episode, we get introduced to the newest Robin, Tim Drake. And honestly, I kinda prefer him to this series' Dick Grayson. This version of the character is sort of an amalgamation of the actual Tim Drake and Jason Todd. So he's a streetwise punk, but he's also a positive, upbeat go-getter. Though sometimes I think they may have borrowed a little bit too much from Jason when making this version of Tim. Yeah, you and me both, buddy. I thought Dick Grayson's return to the show as Nightwing was awesome. As a kid, this was the coolest thing they could ever do, because it seemed like no one except me even knew who Nightwing was. The only source of media at the time that ever mentioned the Nightwing character was the comics, and also this throwaway line in Batman Forever. I need a name. Batboy, Nightwing, I don't know, what do you think? This was really the greatest thing that could ever happen to me. And look at him, he looks awesome! Outside of whatever that is on his head, I mean, he really gave the man a mullet? This late into the 90s? That fad was thankfully long dead by this time. I mean, he's out here fighting crime, but what he should really be doing is fighting his barber! I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not one to talk about hair, but... Come on! I also thought Lauren Lester worked as a far better Nightwing than he did a Robin. He was my all-time favorite part of the whole show, and if I had one complaint, one at all, it's that we saw so little of him. I could not agree more. Visually, tonally, everything about Nightwing was totally rad to the geek out sector of my elementary school gray matter. Lauren Lester's Robin was a big part of the previous cartoon, so it was weird to have him reduced to more of a random casual guest star. That being said, when he did show up, Hell yeah. Get those police boats, Nightwing! You tricked that Catwoman, dude! Yeah, you drive that motorcycle! Sick! Oh, that's it? God damn it. Toward the end of the show's run, they introduced us to the Creeper, who's kind of like DC's own Deadpool or the Mask to a certain degree. I feel like I've heard that comparison before, I just... I can't remember where. He's only appeared in one episode of the show, and yet action figures of this guy are still being made to this day! Why am I single? He's a fan favorite. He even somehow made his way into the Justice League later. Batman saw this guy as world-saving material? Okay. These new additions to the show are definitely welcome to the universe's lore. But then again, there are some additions to the show that I could do without. Like Roxy Rocket or Farmer Brown. Look, I know that they can't all be winners, but did they really have to be such losers? I feel like there's some middle ground there. Whoa! Critters is the best episode of the DCAU, pal. Step it back. Like, for example, Firefly, Calendar Girl, or El Gancho. I don't really feel like they added anything to the show, but they didn't really take anything away either. I mean, they were far from the best, but they weren't quite hitting that worst category. They're definitely not the most memorable, but I'd still say I like them better than uh, the terrible trio, Nostromos, Josiah Wormwood, Boss Biggis. More like Boss Boring. <laughs> Please cut away from me now. I also felt that Bruce Wayne was kinda lacking this season. Like in the later half of the show, they dropped the whole Bruce Wayne Batman alternate voice idea. Now there's no longer any difference between the sound of Bruce Wayne and the sound of Batman. He's just Batman 24-7. And I also think that takes away from the duality of the character. Like for example, with Superman, Superman is the persona and Clark Kent is the person. And with Batman, it's the other way around. Bruce Wayne is the persona, and Batman is the person. Bruce Wayne is nothing more th than a disguise. I don't know, it's just something nerdy that I noticed. I, I kind of feel like the separation of Bruce and Batman is really important to the character, but that's just me. That is definitely something I miss. Kevin Conroy was the first Batman actor to make that distinction, whether it was his choice or that of the amazing voice director Andrea Romano, also responsible for other probably favorites of yours like Avatar or a decade or so of decent SpongeBob. I always liked the, me? I'm just an innocent rich boy voice. Kind of like a bumbling Christopher Reeve Clark Kent. Totally lost with the new show. But it does sort of add to the conversation of Bruce Wayne being the mask. Batman is the person. But still. Some of the new aesthetic choices are confusing. Like Gotham's Red Sky. If anything, it's furthering this whole this is a cartoon theory. I mean, I don't hate it. It complements certain scenes, but it also sometimes just makes the show look like it takes place in hell. Holy crimson skies of death! It's definitely a noticeable change from previous seasons. Like I said, I do like it. I just don't get it. 
I'm gonna stop you right there. This is actually something people commonly misremember as being new to the new Batman adventures. While it became more of a rule for TNBA, the red sky was an aesthetic choice pretty often throughout the original animated series. But a lot of people forget that. I'll let it slide, V. Just know I'm watching. Always watching. But my all-time favorite part of the new adventures is just how expansive the universe feels now. The show feels less like it's about Batman and more about the universe that he inhabits. We get to see so much more of the Bat family than we did in previous seasons. And I think in the new adventures, characters like Batgirl and the second Robin really shine. Again, Nightwing doesn't get the screen time that I hoped he would. I remember when I was younger feeling really let down about that. But the fact that he was used sparingly, I think kind of adds to the mystique of the character. And the distance from the Nightwing character also helped the series' second Robin spread his wings. There's also more focus put on villains who weren't necessarily given their due in the previous seasons of the show. Crossovers with Superman the Animated Series and the heroes and villains of Metropolis were frequent enough to reassure viewers of the continuity of the shows, but rare enough for people to still be excited when it happened. The new Batman Adventures really did take a turn from its predecessor, but there are definitely some things it really got right probably better than BTAS. Some of the animation in this show is the best out of the entire DC animated universe. And with a few of the character designs, things never look better. The creative team did realize their faults oversimplifying some of it, for sure. When characters like Etrigan the Demon, or the aforementioned Joker, or even Batman himself returned for Justice League, they'd had another design pass, mixing in some lost details from the older animation style. Justice League really did find that perfect balance. But that isn't to say some of TNBA's moments didn't knock it out of the park. I know there are some Batman fans who like to act like the change in animation was the end of an era, and I guess in maybe some ways it was, but it wasn't the end of an era. Some people may think that this is where it all went downhill, but the last 24 episodes of Batman the Animated Series, or the only two seasons of the new adventures of batman any way you choose to look at it are some of the most famous episodes in all of the series sins of the father joker's millions growing pains old wounds legends of the dark knight girls night out over the edge which is one of my personal favorites not to mention that the last two episodes of the show were beware the creeper and Mad Love, which was the first ever Harley Quinn origin story, and it's still being retold to this day. So I definitely don't feel like the quality of writing changed with the animation. Though I will say these seasons have their fair share of unnecessary filler, but... Can't all be winners. <laughs> I know that from experience. Okay, you can cut away from me now. The new Adventures of Batman really is a mixed bag. Not everything about it works, but what does work, works well. I personally think it's more hit than miss, but that's not to say that there aren't a couple misses, cuz... There are. I can't say that I enjoyed it any more than the original animated series, but I also can't say that I enjoyed it any less. The Batman Cup is both half full and half empty. There's nothing in this. It's, uh, it's, it's a metaphor. Though, um, now that I think about it, uh, it's, um, it's a bad example, so... Disregard this part of the episode. My final thoughts? The new Batman Adventures is dope. It's sleek, the fat is trimmed, the team really knew what they were doing at this point. And even though Justice League and to an extent Batman Beyond upped the game with digital effects, some of the handcrafted visuals from this Batman show and its Superman counterpart are absolutely stunning and stick with me to this day. The Jason Blood spells, holy crap. The animation on Clayface in Growing Pains, rivals his origin episode. The goat in Critters? Are you freaking kidding me? But seriously, watch this show if you haven't. Yeah, some stuff is dumb, but I think you understand that in general if you decide, I'm gonna watch a Batman cartoon today. Before we go, I want to thank James of the Watchtower database. That man is a not-so-silent protector of all things DCAU related. And the Watchtower is genuinely one of my favorite channels on the platform. If you're a bad fan, then I highly suggest checking out his channel and some of the content on it. So Vigenerates, I'm gonna need y'all to head on over to that channel, click that red subscribe button, and let him know who sent ya. Think of it as our own way of shining our own bat signal in the sky. Online. Virtually. In a comment section. So not in the sky. And also not a bat signal. Well, I am I am just 0 for 2 with metaphors today. This is not 
This is not how I wanted you to see me. This doesn't represent me though. Oh, you're too kind, my dear. It was fun. Hopefully I can be back on sometime. Or you can come to my channel. Or we can make a new channel called WDB Infuso. Does that sound good? No? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Cheers! James, because I like you, I'm... I'm really gonna try to forget about that. But just know now, I'm watching you. Like a bat. Because we, we didn't have enough of those puns in, in, the, in the video, so... Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching once again, and I hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight, and that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.